Thank you guys so much. April 12th, Austin, Texas sold out. April 13th, San Antonio, we have a few show, uh, tickets left. May 5th, the second show in Buffalo has a few ticks left. May 6th in Ithaca, a few ticks left. May 7th, Albany is sold out. Australia is on sale now. We got Sydney's on sale in June. We are adding Melbourne. We are adding Brisbane. All those tickets at chrisdcomedy.com. New York City, Radio City Music Hall, September 22nd, all sold out. So we added September 23rd, the theater at Madison Square Garden. Got a few tickets left for that. September 23rd, New York City, chrisdcomedy.com. Get some merch up at chrisdcomedy.com. If you're in the Boston shows and all the, the merch sold out, guess what, baby? Those sh shirts are available online. They're really cool. Uh, Chrissy Chaos shirts with the Boston Celtics logo. Um, and we got new merch coming. My Vice show every Tuesday, 10 p.m., Super Maximum Retro Show. Watch the show. I'm going to start to, I think, live tweet it or Instagram it um, because the ratings are not doing well. So ChrisDComedy.com for everything. Watch my show on Vice, Super Maximum Retro Show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. Hello, we're here, and it's going to be a fun episode. Um, we have now, we have a, a, a good friend. Um, uh, you know her. You know her podcast very well. You know her work very well. She's from Los Angeles, but she's in, or she's not from Los Angeles. <laughs> she's been living in Los Angeles for a little bit, but, but, but now she's here in New York. A lot of people are starting to come to New York now. A lot of people are starting to get get moved to New York because LA it's 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 just unfortunately it's a great place but it's just not the same Jesus is always setting it on fire and Jesus is always putting um disa natural disasters there and um and Jesus doesn't like Los Angeles anymore but he does like New York and that is why he has given us one of his special little Jewish angels Esther I knew her as Esther Pravitsky aka little Esther but now what she's married and I, she's or about to be married, and and I don't know what. I guess I'll just call you Big Esther now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Medium Esther. Like, do I get that? <laughs> yes. How about transitions, Esther? Okay, that you're, works. You're, uh, Esther's transitioning. <laughs> and, um, okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah. Slow down. No, I actually didn't get married. I just changed my last name, sort of as like a chess move. I like that. Yeah. Wow. So no marriage. Vanity is taking notes. Okay. No marriage, <laughs> but you, but you changed, but you just changed the last name. I really think that that's cool. Thank you. And I actually would like to go home today, uh, and tell Jasmine, who's you know she's really actually my wife I mean she's not my wife we have children we're not married but she gets mad she's like you know like you, I she says wife and I say what she's like but we're not married I'm like yeah but we have children like wait it, the Dave does the same thing to me and it makes you mad yeah I'm like we're married he's like well we're not married he always has to be like we're not married and I'm like but we've been together for 10 years like right this is we've we haven't had children yet but we've had a miscarriage there you go that counts clap it up that means that we've counts. tried yeah that means that means you, he ain't pulling out <laughs> 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 yeah so, so you've had, uh, once you've had a miscarriage, yeah. yeah, you're, you're connected in a very deep way. And I see, interesting, you're, I think it's okay to just say, I'm more on your side. I think it's okay to just, for me to say to Jasmine, hey, we're married. But she then gets defensive. She's like, but we're not. Cause you, and I'm like, well, why can't you now? I'm going to bring, this is what I'm saying. I'm going to go at dinner tonight. I'm going to say, what if you just start going by Jasmine DiStefano? Mm. But we're not like married, but like, just take the last name. Like, I don't care. Do it. And we have the kids. The, the kids have my last name. But like, why do we actually have to go through the pomp and circumstance of it all? This is how I feel as well. Like, I have no spiritual or emotional connection to the concept of like a wedding or marriage. Like, my parents got married in a courthouse because my mom was pregnant. Like, there was no romance there. Right. So I don't, I also grew up without religion. Like, but let me ask you this. Like, do you actively not want to get married? And she does. Is that the... I think there was a time where I actively didn't want to get married and she did. But now I really 
don't think she even wants to get married anymore. I think like, cause she's, cause we just have like our life. Like we're like together all the time. Like we have our kids, we have our house. And my thing is like, well, if we get married, right, we're going to have to just because there's both of us should, we would have to get like a prenup and I don't want to do that. Cause then it's like already you're being like, this isn't going to work. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. And it's just, I, it makes me feel gross. And then I'm like, all, most of my friends are getting divorced now, a lot of them. And I'm like, I'm a child of divorce. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what I don't never, I never saw the reason of like, like I effectively act like a, a married man. I'm like, yeah. I would, I would feel like if I like, you know, cheated on her, I would be like, I'm going to hell for this. Like, this is the mother <laughs> of my, like saying the mother of my children to me is higher status than saying my wife. I agree. <sighs> like, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I also think the weird thing that's on my side of things is that I did beg him to marry me for the first five years of our relationship. Okay. And then, <laughs> then like once he <laughs> proposed, I almost felt like, oh, I got like the power and now I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to take my time to agree to the marriage. I don't know if that. So wait, so are you, is there plans to get married? None. There's none. You have taken his last name. You've legally changed all documents. You have his, what's your real, what's your last name now? It's, so I was Pavitsky and now on Instagram, it's King. Esther King, which I like. No relation to Sean King. No, no, okay. no. And you're, so you're not, you are, and, and you are a white woman. I am a white woman. A white woman. And by the way, Esther is also, do you have Russian heritage? I do. Did we search her at the door? Because she could be a spy. <laughs> okay. Because okay. you're not a Russian spy though. You're no, on America's side. I was born in America. So was okay. my dad. I feel like, okay. you know, right. I, I didn't, no one in my house had an accent or spoke the language. Wh- Very what? American. But you I grew promise. up, what city? I grew up in Skokie. It's a suburb of Chicago. It's S- famous for having a KKK march. Whoa. Yeah, because we had the highest number of Holocaust survivors. So the KKK chose us to be like, this is where we're demonstrating. Nice. Well, that's, I mean, honestly, what I... Something to be proud of. Something to be proud of. I actually appreciate the KKK doing a little bit of research (laughs) because you would not just know off the top of your head that Skokie had the top, had the highest number of Holocaust survivors. They actively had to search for that. And that shows something. They care. They care. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a turn on for me. Yes. (laughs) It's not an ick. I'll tell you that. that. Now, yeah, because, you know, I think that, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, this whole mar- this whole marriage, this whole taking the last name thing is very fascinating to me. And I think that you're at the forefront of a, of a, of a new movement. You get me. I do get you. <laughs> I get you like the KKK gets the people at Skokie. <laughs> and, and I, I think that what you, you doing this is going to lead to a lot of people doing this because you're right. Why would, so, like my daughter, right? One of my daughters, when they want to get married, the tradition will be, I will have to pay for the wedding. Now, <laughs> knowing uh, at least how my seven-year-old is right now, that's going to be a very expensive wedding because she's she's a bougie bitch. That's cool. And and it's great. Yeah. But it I'm already spending like an insane amount of money on a, on a seven-year-old, like American Girl <laughs> dolls and pedicures and manicures. And she, she wants to get her eyelashes done. And it's, it's almost, and then my one-year-old is starting to act that way too. And I'm like, I'm not paying to get my one-year-old's eyelashes done. I'm not <laughs> curling her eyelashes. So, <laughs> but they're just little, little Latina princesses. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to adjust for inflation by the time one of my kids wants to get married. It's going to be like a three hundred thousand dollar wedding. Oh, that's like that's what it would be today. That's not so. You think it's going to be like a five hundred thousand dollar wedding? Yeah, like I'm going to get slammed. It's gonna yeah it's yeah it's going to be a lot. I feel like you could avoid that by well also I feel like it, since you're such a good dad, you're going to raise them to probably not even want to get married. Right. Yes. Yeah, well, that's another good point that I can bring up to Jazz. I'm like, if you want us to save money when our daughters get married, like if, if, if this is, a, it's a money saving plan. It's a savings plan to actually not marry you. That's what I'm gonna say to Jazz. Because <laughs> if our girls grow up with two loving parents who were never married, why would they then one day want to get married? They would be more, they would follow in Esther's footsteps and yeah. say, I'll take his last name, but no reason to spend the 500 grand on a wedding, we can put that into a house. 
you know, my, we can put that into, you know, I don't know what my daughter will do back. She'll probably want to put it into like a spin studio and open up, you know, Delilah's spin Wait, studio. I want to hang out with your daughter. I feel like we'd be like best, best, best friends. She, she, if my daughter, if you hung out with her, first of all, she'd love you. She loves Venetia. She loves, she loves, she's always like obsessed like with her hair and she's just like, she's very girly, my my daughter. And she's also very, I think she actually, I'm going to have her start listening to Trash Tuesday no. because <laughs> because I, you're, you're got you, um, Annie and Kalila's great podcast because I- I would be careful with that one. But well, see, that's the thing is my daughter, she's already on, you know, she's already like scrolls like TikToks on, on YouTube and stuff. Like, and she's, I said to her the other day, I was like, Delilah, you can't be on YouTube all the time. And she's like, I'm not on YouTube I'm on TikTok through YouTube. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but it's the same thing. And she's like, no, it's not. And then I said, Delilah, put it away. She goes, okay, I'll put it away. And then I'll wait for you to forget about it in 20 minutes and I'll just do it again. So she holds the power. No, well, she said to me, she goes, why don't you just sit next to me and make sure that I'm not looking at something you don't want me to be looking at? And then I was like, okay, but I'm trying to watch the game. And she was like, exactly. She was like, you don't care about me. And I was just like- that is such high level gameplay. Yeah. Like at this early of an age, she's yeah. going to ruin so many men's lives. She, she lives with, you know, she, my daughters and I said, my stepson, who's great. We're all like a great family. And um, my stepson's father, you know, is a great dad. Doesn't live obviously with us. That'd be sick. That, that'd be a new reality show. He actually <laughs> he could move in if he'd like. If he's listening, if you're listening, you more than likely to move in. Um, it would actually make my life a lot easier. I wouldn't have to then drop him off and you wouldn't have to come get, we could just, <laughs> you, you could just have play dates with your son in the next room. And, and then, so, but she said, my daughter, the other day they were fighting my seven year old and my stepson How were fighting. How old is your stepson? 12. Okay. So my stepson said, um, I know I said this on the Patreon, but we'll say it on the YouTube. My stepson said to Delilah, um, Santa's not even real. Like, you know, that's like a thing. And then like, you know, she kind of already knows that or whatever, but like still like was kind of like the fuck, like, like kind of questioning me, like, is he not? And I was like, I, you don't say, and <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak English, but she says, he says to her, Santa's not real. And then I thought she was going to like cry or whatever. And then she just says, she takes a minute. She goes, yeah. She goes, your dad's not real. And I remember even her mom got up and she was like, Delilah, you cannot say that. And then Delilah goes, well, where is he? And then he just took his Game Boy, my stepson, and just went upstairs. Can I work for her? Yes. Like, I want to start building the team now. Yes. And I want to be an early adopter. Yes, you can. She, she, she has, you know, if you want to work for her, I, I, <laughs> I'm telling you that she... If, 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 you know how like bad friends has, um, has the girl that they have on yeah, now, juicy, yeah. juicy, who's great. I will allow Delilah's like first summer job when she's maybe like 13, give it a few more years to be that on your girl's pod. Oh she could come God. in and just start sniping, talking shit. I'll let her do an internship yes. in LA with, <laughs> with Esther King, who's not married. And, and, and I, because, you know, listen, I, it, it's important. It's important in today's world for me, having daughters, I want them, I want my girls to be confident, but I think a, sa a level of sassiness in a girl and kind of conviction and, and really sassiness, it's, like a, it's, it's a good weapon to have because it does scare, she does scare other boys her age because she's so sassy mm -hmm. and quick. And I like that about her. And I want to lean into that. And I feel like you girls have that. You, your crew is very, you're not the, as sassy, but like Annie Letterman's, like one of Annie Letterman's greatest powers is she's a bitch. <laughs> That's a, it's a power, but it's, she's a beautiful bitch. Well, look at me. I'm five, <laughs> I'm five feet tall. Like yeah. I have to protect myself by clinging to Annie. Like she protects yes. me. Yes. By the way, my daughter loves Annie. Annie, Annie came over to the house when we were staying in LA and she's still, she was wearing like this crazy, like leopard print jacket. And my daughter is always like, I, she brings up Annie's jacket a lot. This she is, loves Annie. This is really, I'm really glad that young women, young, well, actually she's not a young woman. She's a little girl. But she's a little girl. <laughs> little girls yeah. are taking to, yeah. you know, the message. She no. hates Greta Thunberg, my daughter, <laughs> for no reason. My daughter's anti-climate change. She says, fuck the climate. Did you tell your kids about, like, so you told them Santa was real at a certain point. I told, I haven't told my daughter, my stepson knows, but I haven't told, you know, the 
one year old is just is just a baby. She, I don't even know what language she speaks. She's <laughs> like, there's multiple languages going on in the house. I genuinely am not confident that English is her first language. <laughs> um, but my seven year old, we did tell her this Christmas that um, she asked if one of my uncles uh, was Santa because he's, you know, pretty heavy and, you know, kind of only, we only ever see him on Christmas. And I'm like, he's not Santa, but he's not, not Santa. You okay, know what I mean? Yeah. And she was like, okay. And he, and then she was like, are you and mom Santa? And I was like, we're not Santa, but we're not, not Santa. I, we said, I said that to her a couple of times and cause I wanted her to like come up with it on her own. And she was like, oh, okay. She's like, so in a way, everybody's mom and dad is Santa. And I was like, yeah. Oh, that's ex- kind of poetic. I was like, What yes. about Jewish kids, though? Well, we haven't talked to her about the Jews yet. Okay. We've told her right now to just kind of be aware. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, no, but that is, I haven't gotten to that level yet. I did think about that, about what other religions, but specifically in our religion, what my daughter now believes, which is kind of true, is that Santa doesn't exist. Like there is no one guy, but everybody's mom and dad is Santa, which is is true. Santa is kind of in all of, we're all Santa. I think that's the best way to go about it because I feel like when you lie to kids and make them think that Santa is real, it's like, then as a kid, you feel like you were lied to, betrayed. I'm like, like, did you think I was stupid? Like, I think it's so rude. I think- if I did, if one of the pregnancies ever makes it, it through, will. One of them will make it. <laughs> if I try again, that I feel like I would want to be like, it's a make believe story, and we're pretending that right. Santa is real. Yes, like kind of what you. But but you're so you're saying you would tell them like you would kind of tell story. them it's a lie. Yeah, but we're going along we're with pretending. the lie for you. Pretending. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is a beautiful life skill to have. It is. Yeah, to be a, a very good pretender. <laughs> Well, I feel like too, sometimes, like even with the, what we do in podcasting, like sometimes, like I saw somebody, I don't, I'm not on social media anymore. I have, I have somebody run it um, who cuts his hair like Lancelot from the 15th century. He's got like a, <laughs> he's got like a, he's got like a bob cut. Um, and, um, but he runs it and he's very good at it. But, 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 but he, he uh, uh, told me, he was like, oh, you know, some people were commenting about a certain story that I told on, on Tom Segura's podcast. They're like, oh, I, you told it differently with different facts on another podcast. And like, they're saying like, it's not true. And I'm like, yeah, it's not true. I'm a performer. Yeah. Like I'm, enter- I'm I, this is a form of entertainment. I, a couple of things of it are true, but not everything, most things that if you tell it word for word the way it happened, it's not entertaining. What I'm doing is when we turn these cameras on is being an entertainer. So I'm going to tell you things that may or may not be true. This podcasting is just another art form. It's just another thing that putting it out there, like if somebody writes a TV show or a movie about their life, you wouldn't, ex- if, if every little thing doesn't happen the way it actually happened in life, because that's not what a script, that's not what no, we I, do here. I totally agree. Like we have artistic license and freedom. And also I like to tell people I'm an unreliable narrator. Like you can't always really trust me, especially because like when you say something on a podcast, like let's say I, I hate Taco Bell. Like, which you don't. Which I don't, but I might really believe in a moment that I do yeah. hate it. And then you might see me eating it and be like, she's a hypocrite. She's a liar. It's like, I am unreliable. I change yes. my mind all the time. Yes, I agree. Well, that is I, different than embellishing stories, but it's kind of in the same. It's the same thing. And I only brought it up to say that's kind of what I, you know, like with, with, you know, Santa and things like that, like with lies, I'm kind of like, I'm embellishing things for fun. for my kids for fun. And I, I remind my daughter Delilah, she's always has a possibility of being on a podcast. Your father's the Chrissy chaos. <laughs> The cameras could be everywhere. They could be in your cereal. Homeless <laughs> pimp could be under the table with a, a lens pointing up through the cereal. And this, if, you could be, I, we could be yelling patreon.com slash Christy comedy. <laughs> what does she say to that? <laughs> yeah, I, I do that stuff to her all the time where like I'll draw her in with something serious and like, but then I, I like a joke is coming and then like usually like the punchline like or whatever. She'll just be like, oh, dad, you're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> She'll like walk away. This sounds yeah. a lot like me and my fiance. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're dumb. <laughs> dumb. I know. Wait, do, does she, do you make her laugh? Like, does she think you're funny? So she, my daughter does not think I'm funny. She's very vocal about that. She doesn't get it at all. She's watched multiple 
of my comedy specials and will sit for the entirety of however long it is and make it a point to like not laugh <laughs> and like and whatever and she will say like if somebody comes up and we're out together and somebody recognizes me in the street she'll always do the same thing somebody will come up to me and be like oh hey whatever chrissy like you know fan or whatever can we take a pic and then she'll go what's um your favorite thing that my dad does like she'll put you on the spot right away and then they'll be like oh this, is that your daughter and then you know she'll just be like okay what's your favorite thing that he does because she like kind of like wants to like check you to be like are you really a fan Aww, do you really know his stuff that's and cute. then and then usually if somebody says something like like oh i like this she'll be like oh i don't like that one she always says that like as a little joke with like herself she was like i don't like that one and then she makes them laugh and then like they just like she knows like she takes when i'm with my kid if you see me out in public with my kid she takes the shine and spotlight off me and puts it on her within seconds she's like fuck him it's all about me which Whoa. is kind of powerful i homeless pimp says this and he's true we the last years of my life will be opening for her i will <laughs> And she won't put me in a nice hotel. She'll put, <laughs> like, she'll be in the Ritz Carlton and Pimp and I will be in a fucking Ramada off the yeah, side. I recorded five episodes of a podcast where she hosted. And yeah, she, called she the was, Delilah D Show. She's a killer. She signs her name. Like, if you put your name, like, as a little kid, like Esther Pravitsky, my daughter will put first name Delilah, last name D.com. Her website, she puts Delilah D.com. That's how she signs her name. She's like, my name's Delilah D.com. Oh I'm like, God. no, it's Delilah DeStefano. She's like, yeah, that's where the D is. Oh, so she's just like, you don't matter. She's making her own. Her own thing. She's ha asked multiple times if Homeless Pimp could come over and record her podcast. I'm like, you're literally seven years old. You, you're grounded because you don't do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you didn't eat at any of your dinner. So like, you can't do anything <laughs> until you eat your food. She could be the first like podcast Nepo baby star. Seriously. Yeah. I like, like that. She could be the Lily Rose Depp of podcasting. <laughs> yes. I'm into it. Um, by the way, real quick, as you know, every episode we have an I Am Poppy segment where I talk to you, the ones of us who have um, children, um, we about what to do, little tips with kids each week. And a new tip I have is if you're looking to have sex with your spouse um, and you have kids that are around my kids' age, 12, 7, and 1, give them an activity together for just 10 minutes, I, I, we, we thought of this this weekend. We gave them an activity to do together. We had them, whoever could clean up the living room the fastest. And they had, they had a, a, it was like an Olympic, it was like an Olympic chores. They had to clean the living room, uh, feed, their, feed their sister, do a t uh, the 12 year old and seven year old feed their one year old sister and um, mop up the bathroom on the, on the first floor, they had to do all those things and they had 15 minutes to do it. And we had, a, we said, we're going upstairs. We have a timer up there and we're the judges and we're watching you from through, um, through the door upstairs and 15 minutes and whoever, whoever wins is going to get ice cream at that full ice cream Sunday and the other two are not going to get it. And they really believed it. They did it. It took them 13 minutes. I came in three minutes. <laughs> I, I was three or four pumps, just quick in and out. And we had quick, just sex in the bathroom upstairs while they were doing the chores that we didn't care about because we knew their kids were going to have to re-clean it anyway. <laughs> so, but, but it was just a thing to keep them focused because normally what they do is if we say we're just going to go upstairs, like we'll be right back, one of them will come up. One of them will start to knock. One of them will have a stomach ache. One of them will be like, dad, mom, like I need this, I need that because they know. They know, like they don't know, but they like, they know that like, oh, they want to be alone. So we obviously can't let them be alone, but we distracted them this time and the baby the one-year-old usually if mom jasmine even leaves the room for a second she starts to cry and she's like so i need my mom like i need immediately need my mom if i don't see her for three seconds but she got distracted our one-year-old this time by playing this like there was a lot of fun energy down there because they were like running around and she was like running after her siblings and you know they were feeding her like little spoonfuls of cereal it was like a whole it was like an obstacle course race and then we were able to have quick um unprotected sex so just think of an obstacle course for your kids. If, you'd, if you're looking to have sex with your spouse and, uh, and you can't because um, you're goddamn cock-blocking kids. That is, I have been very curious. Like, wait, if we did have a kid, would, how would we have sex? So this is very... It's very, okay, so you will have, I will let you know that you, you will have a lot less sex um, than you are having now. Um, but 
I, but the sex, when you do have it, it's a bit more meaningful and it's a bit more animalistic, which is nice. It's almost, it, cause what happens is it gets to the, you're pretty much too tired to have sex like on a weekly basis. You just can't, it's like Im- fucking impossible. Like think about like, you know, every day you wake up at 5.30 in the morning with your kids wake you up. You have to get them ready for school on the bus, blah, 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 blah. Get them out by 7.30. Each one gets on the bus and then I take the little one to daycare. So that, by the time you get back, it's 8.30. I have to usually come do podcasts or whatever. She's got to do her. She's a, a personal trainer. She's got to do all her clients. The first kid gets home at 2.30. So 2.30, you're kind of like having that afternoon crash, but you're like, okay, one of the, these one of these kids just showed the fuck up. So I have to... <laughs> drink a coffee, do Adderall, whatever you need to do. <laughs> You're going to deal with the first kid and then homework, blah, 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 blah. Then the next kid comes, then you have to go get the baby. So by 3.30, 3.45, all the children are home. You have to quickly give them, make them a snack, get them, get them, uh, uh, get their homework done, get them all ready for jujitsu or you get jujitsu's at five. So you have the big one goes to on Mondays, both of them go to jujitsu and then we have to bring the baby. And then it's like literally just playing defense with the baby who's trying to run on the mat while they're like grappling and rolling around. You're like, you can't, you have to like occupy the baby for an hour, get them home by 6.30, make a dinner for how, them. How do like, how do you get in the mood? Like, I feel like I know for guys it's easy, but like, doesn't jazz need to be like. Well, that's the thing is, is so, so, so the day becomes 6.30 is dinner they eat then you're like exhausted right like you'd be exhausted you're exhausted just listening like you get exhausted but then the hardest the hardest part of maybe having another miscarriage the hardest (laughs) quite possible (laughs) the hardest the hardest part the hardest part of the day comes at 7 p.m 7 15 when we as the adults are beyond exhausted the kids now are beyond exhausted but you have to get them all in the bath and get them ready for bed, which they don't want to do, to get them to get to bed and brush their teeth and each one of them get and stay in their beds <laughs> oh is, is insane. And then the baby doesn't know anything yet, so she's just hysterical crying the whole time. And then when you put her in the crib and walk out, she screams bloody murder until you go back in and you have to do that like five times. So by the time every child is asleep, it's like 8.45 at night. And then you you or I have to now take showers and get ourselves presentable if we're going to have sex. By the time we get out of the, sh- you know, girls obviously take a little bit longer. She's not done and ready for bed till like 945. And I had already gotten out of the shower at nine. By the time she's walking back into the bedroom, I've been asleep for 20 minutes. <laughs> so it just doesn't happen. And that's why I'm saying the times when it does happen. It's really special. It's really special. And it's, and the animalistic behavior. <laughs> yeah. The three minutes comes in. Well, it's never long because it's like, we yeah. haven't had sex in a month. So it's like, obviously like the minute, like she even is like, if I see like a nipple, I come. <laughs> and, and so, and so she's, and so it's, it's, it's quick sex, but it's animalistic because it usually gets to the point where all, having that schedule every day you both of us just get so horny at one point after like 30 days that you're like we don't give a fuck oh, we're gonna just it's do like it you're so desperate for exactly it. yeah that's hot. it's like an animal exactly mm-hmm. it's like an animal like in heat that has to procreate i i do get that i actually was thinking this the other day do you think that like men in the 50s must have i just feel like they must have all come really fast because yes. there was no porn and also did women even have orgasms in the 50s like that's what i'm scared about i think that's a good question i think that the sexual exploration and of stuff yeah was it wasn't a thing i think you probably had some a few kinky bastards in the 50s that figured it out right. like you know maybe they were like french or something exotic like Iranian or something and they were just like very sexy and and like love sex but I think that from a man I think what men used to do a lot I really just believe like in the 50s men and I want to say women I think there was a lot of cheating going on guys what do we know we know that confidence is going to take you far in life and that is especially true in the bedroom when it's time to step up to the plate that's where blue chew comes in baby blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same ingredients as viagra and cialis but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost the best part this whole thing everything is done online except the erection 
So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, none of that. And Blue Chew tablets are made right here in the USA. And they are prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. And there'll be nothing discreet about your package, baby. So um, Blue Chew, right now, you're going to get a great, great discount. Really great. Listen to this. All you got to do is go to bluechew.com, use the promo code CHAOS, Check out, all you do is pay the $5 shipping and guess what it costs you? Nothing, baby, it's free. That's right, bluechew.com, promo code chaos to receive your first month free. Bluechew.com, promo code chaos, first month free. Just pay the $5 shipping. Thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring this podcast. Okay, listen, any health question you have comes out in your stool. Literally, the answers to anything you want to know about your body are in your poop, baby, okay? When you were a kid, you would read Everybody Poops. Everybody read that book, Everybody Poops, and everybody does just, everybody does poop. But many adults, you've forgotten the details, okay? Pooping, anxiety, self-control, constipation, nervous diarrhea, they're all conditions that many adults experience throughout their lives, okay? A lot of people do that. But at the end of the day, it's just poop, baby. All it is is poop. And seeds makes it easier to go. Seeds DSO1 Daily Symbiotic. That's what it's called. It contains a digestive health probiotic blend compromised of 16 strains that support healthy regularity and, and, and uh, ease of bloating, reinforces healthy stool hydration and ease of evacuation, supports gut ease from occasionally gastrointestinal discomfort associated with increased intestinal transit time. Now, seed, it, it, it's a probiotic that literally, I, I'm telling you, I've used it. And every, what you want in your stool, you want it to be S-shaped. And that's what every single one of my stools are. Just a nice S. You got to look at your poop, guys. Don't just flush it down. Take a peek ski at it. See what it looks like. And I guarantee you what you take in seed, your poop's going to look nice and fresh. It's a plant-based probiotic. We love plant-based over here. It's got, uh, uh, um, you know, studied for, you know, a million. It's got a million benefits. All you do is take two capsules once a day on an empty stomach. It'd be the first thing you do in the morning. No calories too, so you're not even breaking your fast. Um, and two hours after your last meal. That's the best one, best thing to do. It's engineered to survive your external and internal environments. Um, and it's really, really, really great. Now, how do we get them a promo code and a discount? We'll tell you right here, because that's what we want. That's what we want here. We want to we wanna give you guys products that we know and we like, but also get you, save a little money on them. So right now, if you want to start your new healthy habit, what you do is go to seed.com, that's S-E-E-D.com slash chaos, and use the code chaos to redeem 20% off your first month of Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed.com slash chaos, and use the code chaos, baby. Seed, go try it. Oh, I yeah. just think it was happening. I think because there was almost no way to get caught. I think the cheating now, I think it's subconscious, but I think a lot of people, I think cheating is going down. I do believe cheating is going down because you have to understand if you're going to cheat on a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend, there's an astronomically high chance you're going to get caught. It's so easy. We're all so connected now. We're back then. I don't think that, I mean, how many times have we heard of mostly men, that have had full other families in other right. states. They but just had a, you can't have another family in another state anymore. Is all of this based on just like watching Mad Men? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just started it. <laughs> yeah. Shout okay. out John Ham. I just had to check. Okay. Um, yeah. No, but I, because the reason I bring it up or, or the reason I was thinking <clears throat> about it is because TikTok has helped my sex life so much because there's so oh. many like cool young sluts on there talking about like, here's how I orgasm from like being on top. And I feel like it's really changed my game. Do you feel like you have to have an orgasm every time you have sex with your husband or boyfriend who ha you have the same last name as? Yes, I do. Um, I would say that sometimes I'm like in the zone or in the mood to like make it happen with 
the person. And then there's other times where I'm like, okay, let's just more like what you're saying, probably jazz. It's like, let's just do this for you. And then I'll do it myself. Like I'll right. take it into my own head. Cause sometimes you're like tired and lazy yeah. and it's kind of hard work to do it with another person. Yeah. I want to know what's the most interesting thing you've learned from the TikTok sluts. Okay. By the way, is that an account, Young Hot TikTok Slots? <laughs> no, but it, okay. it, it should be. Okay. Um, that could be our new podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Esther's living in New York. Her and I are the Young Hot TikTok Slots. <laughs> Did you watch Succession last night? They, I didn't, but I heard it's great. They call each other, two characters on the show call each other the Disgusting Brothers. Yeah, yeah. And I really relate to that. Yes. Like, I want to be a Disgusting that's Brother disgusting with brother. someone. I cannot wait to watch Succession. It's, I think that show is the best show on TV. It's obviously that that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so go Okay, ahead. Um, the best tip I've learned from the young, hot TikTok sluts who've changed my life for the better, I would say like getting on top and like... I can't really demonstrate it, but if you look kind of like Google around, basically they just showed me like there's a certain way to move your hips that like works better for you. And I think also I actually got really good sex advice in high school. I literally what I did was I went up to the prettiest girl and I was like, can you teach me how to have sex? And she was like, oh. must have been in a good mood. And was nice. just like, sure. It sounds and like an episode of Euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> and she basically just said, get on top and do whatever feels good for you. Don't care about the other person. Wow. And so I think that is sort of like the best starting point to work off of. And the TikTok slots will kind of guide you in tips and tricks. Okay. To them, but. So go find them because now, do you think do they have any advice? Do they have any TikTok slots for men? Yeah. That you found? Yeah, there is definitely, there's a lot of cool women on there that are like, guys, here's what you have to do. But the thing is, is that TikTok is like Puritan. Like you can't actually, so when you, you have to like speak in code. Got it. So it's a little hard to find like sex. You have to spell it S-E-G-G-S. S-E-G-G. Oh, that's sex. I saw a kid wearing a shirt the other day that said sex. Yeah. That's sex. That, oh, that's, that's sex. A, that's a funny quote. Oh, that's sex. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought sex. I swear to God, I thought it was like a new boot company, like Uggs. <laughs> but like they're just, they'll tell guys to like, the different ways to do it, which I, you know, I'll stay out of that. That's none of my business. Um, right. You do. I feel you, like the guys, there's really like, if you can't come, if you're having unprotected sex with a woman and you can't come, you're gay. That's what I would assume. Yeah. Because how can you not, the whole thing, like it's, you know, it, it's a flashlight made by God. <laughs> it's, that's what a vagina is, is it's human. <laughs> it's Jesus's own brand of flashlights, his favorite brand. So if you're putting your penis in that, and you're not coming, that's, again, totally fine, whatever it is, but I would assume it's probably because you're gay or or you could be on the wrong blood pressure medicine because I will say my medicine, Losartan, shout out Losartan blood pressure medicine, <laughs> it, do, it does make it a little bit harder to come and it does make it a little bit harder to maintain an erection. Oh, really? So I think I'm going to talk to my doctor about maybe switching blood pressure meds. Lexapro has done a sim had a similar effect on me in maintaining my erection. Yes. Like, no, but it does... When I first went on it, it was, I noticed like, okay, it's a fight to f yeah. to the finish line. Like you have to really focus, but as you s stay on it longer. You Usually with it people on Lexapro have a fat face, but you're skinny. You have oh, a skinny really? face. You thank have like you. a, you have like a good uh, body weight face. That's, thank you. Yes. It's I, proportionate. Okay. I would say that, I would say that you are, your body weight and, and everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. That feels like it's weird that you went out of your way to say that. It makes me feel like it's not true. <laughs> it is true. But um, when I was born, my dad would always be like, why is your head so round? It looks like a bowling ball. So oh, that, that probably made you feel nice. It did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you get along with your dad? Yeah. He's like, I actually, that's why I'm so into how you're like a, like yeah. into your girls. Yeah. My dad is like fully my best friend. So s speaking of your dad, if we can pull up the clip uh, with, um, Brody Stevens. This is from the Brody show. Oh, RIP yeah. Brody Stevens. So sad that he passed away was I think one of the, the the funniest, most unique comics that we had. But this clip, I will sometimes Google this clip. I, the only way I could still find it is off Nikki Glazer's Instagram is was one of the funniest clips I've ever seen ever on television. It's, it's Brody <laughs> Stevens talking about how he pushed it to the limit with the ladyboy culture in Bangkok. Correct. And you are just listening and trying to talk to him and trying to listen and not laugh. But it was 
when I watched this clip, I thought about it when you were coming on the show today because like, oh, you could really tell out of this clip what I get is, oh, Esther loves her dad because you bring up your dad at one point, I think, um, about how like oh. your dad, you're like, you know, that your dad, I forgot exactly. No, it's because Brody was always really insecure that he was in his 40s and he hadn't met a, a woman and hadn't had kids yet and settled down my dad had me when he was 44 so I often have to tell a lot of sad older men in our field like hey it's okay right you have time yeah some of them it I was wrong <laughs> they, <laughs> it's not gonna happen but yeah um <laughs> but that said, like, I do think I like to share that wisdom right. and be like, it's okay, you know? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do and Nobody's, you know, everybody's in doing this life <laughs> at a different speed, right? Everybody's at a different speed. Everybody's doing things a different year. But, but you know, I do think with children, though, your dad, was, that, was he your first kid? He was my dad, so he was oh, not right, my right, first right, kid. Right. Were you his first kid? Sorry. <laughs> I was his Sorry. first and only kid, yeah. Wow. So he, so I personally think having a kid in your four, early 40s like your dad did, there's something beautiful about that because you've kind of lived and kind of done and experienced a lot in life. You've had a great time this in is, life. And now you have a baby. Yeah, no, that is one of the big selling points. Well, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want one, so don't worry. Okay. Um, well, you can have it at well, you can't have it at 44. You could. I Natasha Legero did that. Oh, true. Yeah. Shout so out Natasha Legero. It's great possible. gloves. I mean, beautiful gloves. Yeah. Um, famously wears beautiful gloves. Uh, yes. I okay. So I think there's a lot of benefits to having a what you're saying, like because he he did live a life, and so. I, my dad wasn't some like young idiot, like trying to figure things out, which I do realize you had kids kind of young. Maybe you were a young idiot, but <laughs> I was, but I do think that young idiots on TikTok, that that's also <laughs> a good story too, because it does. I totally am making this up as I go, but it does a little bit seem like you had kids and like you kind of took your life to the next level because of it. They had to. Well, when I had my first daughter at 30, I had just started like making any like livable money as a comic and like, and, and was fully in that world. And a lot of the advice, a lot of the people were telling me like older comics, like, damn dude, like, why would you have a kid now? Why would you do that now? You're like, it's so hard when you're a, a parent and blah, 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 blah. But I kept thinking, well, I feel like now nature has said, you, if you don't figure this out, yeah, you're, now it's not about just you anymore. Like you have to pay for this. Like you're 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 responsible for this young child's life. So you have to figure it out. And I I did. I I was like, well, I am. If I've put my, I've now. Not, it's not only like I put all my eggs in the. I had originally just put my eggs in the comedy basket for me. But then when it's I was really a, like kind of rude to mention eggs, knowing like sorry, what's going sorry, on. Sorry, I know. I I apologize. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Um, I, I know, I know. I'll try not to, I'll try not to. but, but I, I do feel like, you know, having kids when I was younger and now having my second one at 38, I learned, I learned a lot. I learned a lot in my mid thirties. Like I grew up like quick and like got like as mature as I think I could ever be quick because you realize like once you have a responsibility of li once life is not about you, cause it's very difficult. Even if you're like the most selfless person ever, it, you are doing everything you're doing, every motivation you have, if you don't have children or a husband or a wife is like just for you, it's just yeah. about you, which is fine, but it it's, can't be that way. When it's yeah. very difficult to be like, when I had my kid, I was like, Oh wow. I'm in like third place in my own life. Like, I, I not nothing everything thought I have every motivation I have and I was like well how does this affect the children how, how will I so you have to just you have to become that and some people can't accept it which I get but some people can um but but I but the the Brody Stevens clip because I was like you when I watched that clip it's so funny how f just genuinely fucking funny Brody was but but you like like listening to him, I always, I was like, oh, she's like really sweet. Like your look, I, it almost felt like a father daughter relationship. This yeah. Clip. I, he would always joke that he was my stepfather. Like, yes. no, I totally, we were, we definitely had a really special, special connection. We would hike every day together. Like he was, he was a great 
person. Now, was this clip, was this like you, this was, this is like a reality show. So like he yeah. really just started going into that. You had no idea this was going to happen. No, totally. Like we, he was like, let's get lunch. There'll be cameras. I was like, sure, whatever. Like yeah. I don't care. And so this was like a typical day for you guys. Like he would do yeah, shit like this all the time. Totally. <laughs> and there was even a time where yeah. I had just gotten dumped and I was like, I really needed advice. And Brody was like, oh, I'll, we lived in the same apartment building. And he came down to my apartment with camera crew yeah. like, and <laughs> filmed him giving me breakup <laughs> advice. I was like, all right. Like, I guess. But well, like, that, that didn't even make you mad. You were no. like, this is just Brody doing Brody. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. And now, then are, I'll be able to rewatch it. Are you upset it? that they keep hunting for his ghost at the comedy store? Are they doing that? They've that's, done it twice now. That's stupid. stupid. They televised it's just it. dumb. But I don't, I also don't believe in ghosts. I think like, okay. and if people do like. Like, that hurt Pimp's feelings, by um, the way, just I now. He's a big, he has I every guess it. about ghosts. I think I we need some, we all need something to believe in. So if that's wow. your thing, like, I'm happy for you, but yeah. uh, I'm personally not afraid of ghosts. And or, you've never felt the Brody spirit in the store? N I mean, I did when he was alive, yes. you know, but no, not. That hasn't happened. <sighs> I also grew up in a house that both my grandparents died in before I was born. and Like so tragically and suddenly? <laughs> sort of. Really? <laughs> well... <laughs> My grandfather had a, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not that cool. Um, That'd be sick. No, but so I just am not, it's not like a scary concept to me. I don't know. I also feel like I could be a mortician. Like if I wasn't a stand-up comedian, I'd be like. Okay, so let me ask you this. So, so where where my I grew up, right? In my house that my mom still lives in. She was told when I didn't know this until I had moved out, but she was told when she bought the house that the previous owner had hung themselves in the basement. And she went ahead and bought the house anyway because she was like, I need a place to raise my son. Do you, are you the type of person, if you were given that information, if let's say you and, you and uh, Mr. King were going to, to, get, <laughs> up, King. to get a house, you're, you're saying, you know what, fuck it, we're going to buy a house on Staten Island. And, and you found out that someone was killed themselves in that house. Would it deter you from buying it? No, because I am a firm believer that wherever I go, I bring my own energy. Like my energy will dominate the space. I'll take it over. Okay. Like nobody else can fuck with it. I yeah, that wouldn't. Unless you're doing me. a podcast with Annie Letterman, then it's <laughs> that's her true. Energy. Then it's her all her, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I like, <laughs> I'm like a small dog around Annie. I just lay on my back and let her Love rub it. my belly. Like um. That's how I was when I was her roommate. <laughs> I would just lay on the floor. <laughs> Wait, also, uh, side note, speaking of Mr. King, he is a huge fan of yours because he loves the viral, the clip that went viral of you talking about Tupperware. Oh, yeah. He, like, quotes it a lot. He's shown it to me several times. That, well, t thank you, Mr. King. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll sign a Tupperware for you if you'd like. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's crazy, that clip, because people will comment that to me, like, in public or social media or whatever and it's like you know how it is like we do stand up we try to come up with jokes every day we're working on this craft every day and far and away the biggest thing i've ever done is mispronounce the word tupperware <laughs> like that is why people come to my shows to be like hey that idiot has his speech impediment he's a big dumb fucking idiot it is true yeah. it's like why is that why he's a fan of yours like that is well, weird whatever <laughs> yeah well no what, it works whatever gets him in yeah now um I wanted to ask, um, uh, there was, some, wait, what, not, well, this, oh yeah, this, this is a thing. This is a new article. This is a new conspiracy out now that the guy, um, Kevin, is it Fetterman or is it Fetterline? Who's Britney? I always <laughs> mix him up with Andrew, with Britney Spears is Kevin Fetterline. Kevin Fetterline is Britney Spears' ex-husband. Yeah. So then this is Kevin Fetterman. He was the, uh, um, I think he's a Senator from Pennsylvania and he went up against Dr. Oz and lost. Um, Dr. Oz won. No, Dr. Oh. Oz. I'm sorry. Dr. Oz lost. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Dr. Oz lost. Sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. Dr. Oz lost. I know. Sorry. In my world, Dr. Oz won. Um, in my America. Um, so, so, but Kevin Fetterman, they're saying now is a body double. They're saying this is a, because this is a big thing that your people would do. The Russians are big into body doubles. So oh. we, it's kind of happening now in the United States where they really think that this Kevin Fetterman died of a stroke months ago and they put this body double in right under our noses and 
I don't know what to think. Do you feel, as a Russian, supposedly not a Russian spy, do you think that United States now is becoming a little sketch? Is it becoming a little sketch for Okay, you? let's circle back to the conversation we had about Santa, right? Remember how okay. we were saying, like, let's i would like santa to be like a story that we talk about it entertains right. us we embellish like to me that's all that this is it's like to think that the government hasn't you've been to the dmv like those people don't they don't really they're not like creative no they don't have like fun ideas like no. so i think it's kind of up to us as the public to like keep things spicy by being like oh like what if it's a body double or like what if this mm. and that so this is a Very story we're, we're using to keep ourselves entertained because life is boring and so of course no one who nobody cares enough to put in the effort right to pull this off right, right? like okay I like what you said. We're looking for reasons to spice our own life up and we start to create these narratives. That yes. There's a lot of truth to that. Now, with that being said, do you believe there was a fifth plane involved in September 11th? Oh, is, is that one of the... Uh, I watch a documentary on Hulu that I'd like to question you on. Um, <laughs> on the fifth... Do you believe it was possible... Does this have anything to do with Building 7? Yes. <laughs> yeah, see? She, yes. She, now she's understanding. The, okay, so... TMZ put out a documentary. Anything that TMZ puts out by Harvey, what's his name? Weinstein? Levin, <laughs> I believe. Um, so what happened was, is, is you know about the four, you know, plane. This is like 9-11 fan fiction. No, so th it's crazy that this came out on, I swear to God, th last week, I was, it was the middle of the afternoon. It was one o'clock. I, I, I wasn't feeling well. I was home and- my, I was having a miscarriage. That's how they and, 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 and my daughter, my daughter, my baby was home, and we were sitting. You know, we were putting on her, watching her cocoa melon, and I was giving her a Nutrigrain bar. She loves Nutrigrain. She goes cookie, cookie. She thinks they're cookies. She goes cookie. So I gave her when I, she says cookie, I know she means an apple cinnamon Nutrigrain bar. Aww. So I got her an apple cinnamon Nutrigrain bar, and I had her on my lap, and she wasn't really watching cocoa melon. She was like done with it. So I said, I'm gonna put on. Daddy wants to put on what he wants to watch, and I put on Hulu to go to the live TV, but I saw the 9-11 the fifth plane and okay. I said this is what we're going to watch so honey. this is like what's going into your one-year-old subconscious yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I will say she sat there and ate that Nutrigrain bar and was watched and enamored by the facts put out <laughs> by T Harvey Levin and TMZ we both were kind of looking at each other every scene my, my she would look up at me when they would say that um the, a potential fifth plane which had a target for building seven she would look up at me and go daddy and I would say mm -hmm. yes this is what it is <laughs> this is what it is and and so what happened was, though, it is interesting. I would encourage people to watch this documentary. Basically, the four planes, you know, took off from various airports and, you know, did one, one hit each Twin Tower, one hit the Pentagon, one hit uh, crashed um, from the heroic people played by Mark Wahlberg. One crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. So those are four. Those are the four we know about. But this documentary puts forth an idea of a fifth plane. Basically, they said that the, this flight, this United flight, said that people had boarded their plane, okay, on September 11th, before the shit hit. It was like 8.30 in the morning. No planes had hit anything yet. Nobody I love knew that it. you're setting the scene. I'm like getting into character. See? As one of the passengers. <laughs> yes, get, yeah. And this is, this, is, this is, like, imagine being my daughter. Imagine, like, <laughs> how in, engulfed she was with this. <sighs> so four people, four people get on first class in, on United, right? And normal, whatever. It's it's a man in a business suit. So it's four Middle Eastern people, but they but they said they were like this doesn't mean anything. They were like we're not racist at United. I was like you okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they were like they were like just because they were Middle Eastern didn't make us look at them. Okay. I was like okay, whatever you say. And but they said a man in a business suit, a child, then a man sitting alone who was profess profusely sweating. Okay, but alone, but prof like they said, profusely. Like it was a cool morning, September 11th, and it's air conditioned on the plane, and this guy was like dripping in sweat. And a woman who was sitting in a full burqa, but they knew it was a man. So they knew, they were like, and the lady says in the documentary, she's like, I, I'm not Islamic. She's like, but I, would, I don't think that Islamic people are allowed to be transgender. 
And she said, um, she said, and I and I know that that was a man. She said you could see his. He had his legs out. He had very hairy legs. You could tell by his stature that he was a man. But he was in a burqa. I don't trust anyone that says that they know it was a man when they don't know it was a man. <laughs> so I, that's. <laughs> like, uh, this is what this woman said. Women have hairy legs. Women have muscular stature, and also people sweat on planes because they might be nervous to fly. So I agree with you but okay. but you know i'm still going along but for the ride. listen but you know if you have if you have something to say say it to maria barone the flight attendant on united flight whatever okay from september 11 2001 because maria barone she this woman just looked like she's like she's like a, a fucking a real deal bitch from jersey so she said i can tell by the name <laughs> yes so she said this is what she witnessed okay and then here's what happens they didn't have the right, there was a problem with like the food cart service that day and they didn't have the meals that they had, I guess, pre-ordered. I guess they were vegan or vegetarian or whatever. And they say to the people, um, you know, we don't have the right meal. So we're just waiting to get you like a, a, a substitute meals, like a wine and cheese package so you can eat on the flight. And the guy- Did someone the- with dietary restrictions save all these people's <laughs> lives? Yes, yes. And, 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 and so, so this, the guy in the suit, is like, we need to take off right now. Like, take off this plane. We don't want to eat. He's like yelling at the flight attendant. And they're like, to the point, they were the flight attendants in first class were getting yelled at to the point where they told the pilot, again, nobody knows about September 11th yet. None of the news had broke. They say, hey, like these passengers are being like pretty unruly. Like they're telling us like, we need to get in the air right now. And the pilot who was interviewed was like, you know, that made me want to ground the plane right there. I didn't even know about September okay, 11th. Yeah, I am getting the chills. Yeah, and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so he was like, he was like, that's exactly what my daughter was doing. So, <laughs> so, so he says, he says, I was thinking of grounding the plane right there and I could hear them. He could hear them through the cockpit door being like, get the plane in the air or whatever they were saying in... Uh, oh get it in the God. air. He was like, you know, they could say they were yelling in Arabic. Good lesson, not just for terrorists, but for everyone. It's like you catch more bees with honey. Don't be nasty and make demands for the plane to take off if they would have been nicer. Okay, keep going. Yes, I agree with that, though. Any any terrorist who's listening, catch more bees with honey. (laughs) Esther said it first. So, 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 so he, he says, he says the the pilot, what happened was is he said it was 9 a.m., right? And. Pilot airport traffic is not the same as car traffic. He said at 9 a.m. on a highway, there'd be bumper to bumper traffic. But in airports, the traffic is like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. People are leaving. By 9 a.m., there's really very little traffic. It's usually two or three planes and then you take off. He said, but for whatever reason, this day, September 11th, there were like 10 planes in front of him. Like, and it's, and it's very rare that that happens. Like there, there was some other problem. Wait, can I interject a possible yes. theory as to the problem? Yes. So on September 10th, 2001, my parents were in Las Vegas cause my dad's a compulsive gambler Shut and, up. um, their flight was delayed and it kept getting pushed and pushed later and later. And it finally got delayed to like 5 AM and the people that they were with were like, fuck this. We're just, cause it was all these gamblers. They're like, we're just going to stay in Vegas longer. And so they stayed and my mom had to go to work the next day. She's a receptionist, which it's like, mom, they would have been fine without you, but <laughs> she's like, we have to go. So they flew and they got in at like 7 AM on September 11th. But I'm wondering if there was like all these flight delays the day before that caused that possibly so i some i should have been in the documentary literally i have uh, evidence should, when they make part two your your evidence <laughs> they and so and so this is the pilot this is the flight attendant but side note all of my dad's friends that didn't stay and get on the plane like they were then stranded in vegas and had to like rent cars because obviously september 11th happened so the they had day. to drive across the country yeah yeah and they didn't have any money because they lost it all gambling exactly yeah so <laughs> So, so he, he, so the pilot, it's 9 a.m. And he said, there's all this traffic. And he said, I can hear them saying like, get this plane off the ground. Like the, 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 the people in first class. Then he said, of course, what happened is the FAA grounds all airlines because the news had broke of, you know, September 11th, which everybody knows, blah, blah, blah. He was like, so it all got grounded. So they had, now the FAA is involved. Every plane had to go back to the gate, its gate and park. He said, so. A United, people are getting off the plane, and then he and they they rushed that those first class passengers got off the plane. They said, 
maybe we had our suspicions, but like we're not going to, st- you know, it's a free country. We're not holding these people just for being weird and wanting to take off right away. So they were, they went, we're like, you know, nobody, no government officials had told us anything yet. He said, the only, what happened was is two United mechanics, you know, uh, of the mechanic team that came on the plane and said, Hey guys, you know, we just got word from the FA or whatever governing body. Everyone needs to evacuate, get off the plane. The pilot, this guy is like, you know, I'm the, I leave because if a, if a United members are on the plane, then they're on the plane. He said, but when I left, I walked out, I shut off the engine. I did all my checks. I did what I was supposed to do. Pilot was like, I was the last one off the plane. This guy was the last one off the plane. The only people on the plane were the United mechanics team. Okay. Fine. 20 minutes later, they get taken to a hotel. Uh, you know, the, the, the flight attendant and the pilot, you know, airport hotel, which is standard. Flights canceled, of course. They're all watching on the news. They get a knock at the door from the FBI, and they, they want to talk to the pilot. And they say, you know, sit him down, and they're like, tell us what you know. And he's like, I don't know anything. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. He explains to them about the, the four first-class passengers. He goes, that's the only thing I could tell you that was strange. He says, why was, the FBI says to him, why were the floorboards lifted up on the airline? And he goes, I did not do that. He goes, you all, when we got, when this, cause the SWAT team then entered the plane like 30 minutes after they parked it. Cause now like the whole FBI and government knows it's a terrorist attack. The SWAT team gets on the plane. And when they got on the plane, they had seen the floorboards opened up on the airline. So that means that the United people who had said we were sent to come, we were sent by the governing FAA or whatever. Yeah. They were not sent. Nobody from United or the FAA sent anybody. Every other airline, every the pilot was the last one. You lock the door and you walk away. It's your aircraft. But these people came on and were like, no, no, United sent us. So what they think is though there were people working on United, working for United that were in cahoots oh. with the potential for terrorists because what happened was, see, the floorboards are open and they couldn't explain that. Open no. floor edge. We're getting somewhere. But here's but here's also what happens. So you 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 have the tail. You, you identify your plane by the tail number. So let's say that that plane was one two three four. They the SWAT team looked in all the planes. There was like five of them. Plane you know one two one two three five. So one number off had box cutters in the back pockets of all four first class seats. So they think that those what? those United members who were working, those United members who came on to uh, United Mechanic Team, to, they think they were on that plane looking for those box starters to get rid of the evidence because what must have happened was the terrorists just were off by one tail number and they put the box cutters on the wrong plane. So that's why they think this plane, the fifth plane, this is the fifth terrorist plane that never took off that was destined to hit, potentially hit Building 7 in the World Trade Center. And the reason why they think that one was going to hit Building 7 is because they think Building 7 was pre-rigged with explosives and it just collapsed for no reason at all. Nobody ever talks about it. They think that was the plane that was supposed to hit Building 7. And and, okay. and it didn't, but they blew it up anyway. That's what the theory is. Give me a gun! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I spilled my coffee. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you were pointing out like, like the floor hatch to open up the floor hatch. <laughs> Venetia is a terrorist. Okay. (laughs) So at first I'm listening to this, right? I'm like, okay, well, it does seem like it's very easy for, if like Elon Musk has seen all my Twitter DMs in the last 30 years, like, of course the U.S. government could figure out if these guys were terrorists, right? Yes. But now that you say there's potential that like United employees were in on it, now we're, now the economy is involved, right? Now the government has a a reason to keep this a secret. And so, you know, because they don't want people to be able to sue United if United was culpable for the other. Yep. So, uh, all right. Maybe it is good that your daughter heard this. See? Yeah. And, (laughs) and, and here's the other thing. The flight attendant who I mentioned before, when she got questioned, because two things that stick out to me. One, why is the American public, we're not even hearing about a fifth plane until 22 years later. That's because the government knew some shit. They're like, if this thing gets out, this whole plan is out. And this, Maria Barone, I, I said her name was it Sandy Thornburg, Thornton, whatever. I was just making up her name. But she said, basically what happened was, is when the FBI was interviewing her, they all got interviewed September 12th. This, all these flight attendants got interviewed by the FBI she was asking questions and the FBI agent stopped her and said, stop asking questions. 
This is a lot deeper and worse than you could ever imagine. So just answer the questions that I ask you for your own safety. Oh my God, I'm going to say that to a guy. (laughs) 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 That's so hot. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Okay, I okay, so So do you believe that there's a cons- fifth plane conspiracy now? Here's what I'll say. Like <laughs> there's definitely no the government has never given us any reason to trust them. So I do understand okay. everyone who's like a conspiracy theorist. I get it. To be clear, you're talking about the United States government, not the Russian government. That's true. Okay. That uh, very clear. Everyone okay. knows that. Yeah, I don't want anything happening. No, 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 thank you. Yeah. I love Putin. He's my daddy. Um yes. but so I I would say that like that I get it, dear conspiracy theorists. Like I hear you. It's like the government can't be trusted, of course. But I also think we need to like be a little weary that a lot of us who don't trust the government are uneducated, are stupid, yes. are gullible, and so like we have to really like be careful about the things that we're willing to believe and the paths we're willing to go down. I have not watched the documentary. One of my favorite songs is that guy on YouTube who sings a song about Building 7. 9-11, 9-11, what went down with Building 7? Martin Oates. Beautiful voice, by the way. Thank you. I was just doing yes. an impression of him. Yes. This is worth pulling can we, up. Can we have this? We'll have this take us out of the episode. Um. So this song uh, is, there. I think it speaks for itself. Nice. And a lot of people don't talk about the beautiful art that was inspired. By 9-11. Yeah. So there was a deli. Pimp, remember this? There was a deli on Staten Island. I think it was the day, one of the days we were filming Hey Babe, but we didn't talk about it. There was a deli on Staten Island on 9-11. They made a brochure to for a half price sandwich giveaway for 911 and they had two subs that were remember that they had two subs that were like the World Trade Center wow. were like and you could get like a half off like you know salami and cheese sandwich people forget for how, 9/11. how creative capitalism can be and yeah. how beautiful <laughs> yeah. things are are come from yeah. terrible tragedies yeah. i i i've seen the, half so, off That's half a- off what the, That's a good deal. The classic like Brooklyn Staten Island tattoo has been and I've seen this on many men at the gym has been Jesus Christ on your back, you know, tattoo on your back of Jesus Christ holding his hands out with the two crucifixion holes through his hand with each twin tower going through each hand. <laughs> nice. With the draped in the American flag around his wrist. That's the tattoo. That's really Would you what would you if a guy had a tattoo would you be like I'll take his last name? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would know he's smarter than me. So yeah, yes. he knows more than I know. Uh, so we've convinced, so Esther <laughs> now to f- let the record show does not believe in ghosts, but does believe in the conspiracy surrounding Building 7. That's correct. Yes. Yes. That's what it is. Okay. And when you listen to the song, you'll see why it was easy to convince me. That's it. Well, and by the way, good news for uh, you and your people, the Jewish people, Kanye West loves you again. Yeah. He's no, that's commented great on news. That. Great news. We're so all very happy. Kanye's back, baby. Yeah, I mean, certainly my Yeezy collection that I've invested in, it's really good for that, the right. value. Right, Um Yeah, I, I I was a big Kanye supporter, but I think that, like, it's a little, it's just a little, it's, he's giving the ick. It's too, he's giving ick vibes, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's trolling now, too, when he said, I like Jewish people again. He's just being a troll. The fans in the live chat want to know if you believe in aliens or the mothership they announced. The mother, the, the mothership they announced Rogan's comedy the, club in Austin. Yeah, the comedy club. No, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the DOJ said there's a, or the DOD said there's a mothership in outer space sending drones here. And, and the sure. DOD, our U.S. government said that. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. You know, if here's the thing, you can't trust the government. So if they're saying that, we know it's just to get us off the scent of like taxes and stuff. Yeah, you they're trying. To They're me, trying to entertain all the dumb people so that they can like just give us less and less money and benefits. To me, there's no coincidence that this comes out the same week the fifth plane comes out on Hulu. Mm. I think the fifth plane <laughs> coming out has made enough people say for sure 9-11 was done by our own government and they're going to be like, you know what? Distract them with the UFO mothership headline mm. that we've had prepared Yes, by Zimone Perez. TMZ documentary it was going to take over and they need to, yes, they're yes. too powerful. Too powerful. But if there is an alien mothership, I mean, it, it, it is a plausible idea. Because totally. why, what is every other, 
you know, every other war in human history, we always, you always need to have some, you need to take over some type of land and have like a staging for invasions. You can't usually invade from your home country. You have to get a little closer. So this might be, they took over our Milky Way galaxy and they're like, that's where the mothership is. And then they're going to start throwing. But what if they sent the body double for the Pennsylvania guy? You think he's an alien? Why not? Could be. See, this is where it gets a little too off track for me. But I will say, I'm sure there's aliens. And if they, I'm, I'm going, they come in peace. I'm going in peace. Like if they yeah. want to, they make us slaves, whatever they want to do. Like I'm on board. I'm not fighting it. I'm not holding on tight to like my current life. I'm going to go with the change. Let me ask you this before we let you go. Do you, if you're, you know, we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. So if you had to pick a way to die and these are the only two options okay the only two hate, options would this you is, i hate guys this would is you a rather thing. die of cancer or aids okay um i and you could pick the cancer how did i get aids you got aids um i will say just as one does okay i'm gonna go get sex with a gay man okay you know, I'll go AIDS because I would love to have sex with a gay man. Okay. There's there actually go. a couple of gay men that I'm super attracted to. Um, really? Yes. Am I one of them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think also I would go with AIDS because here's the thing. Cancer, if you die of cancer, they're both unfortunate. But if you die of cancer, you could have, cancer just happens. But if you die of AIDS, you know, at the very least, that person was having a lot of fun. They were, whether they were doing intravenous drugs, having unprotected sex, having sex with men, whatever you were doing, it was fun, fun, fun. And at least you, there is nobody who dies of AIDS that didn't have a great time in their life. I would also, though, argue that cancer doesn't just come out of nowhere. And it's like you could get it from just eating like a lot of processed meats. And that's also really fun. Good call, from vaping? Yeah. Yeah. You were eating so, processed meats vaping. Either way, you lived hard and that's it. Yeah. Great. <laughs> well, there it is. Esther said she'd rather die of AIDS, so follow her on Instagram. <laughs> Can't believe you got me to say that. Where, where can people see you? Uh, I am on tour. You can get tickets at estheronice.com. There it is, folks. And Thank- tune in to me and Chris's new podcast, Young Hot Sluts. Young Hot Sluts. <laughs> Watch it after Trash Tuesday. Thank you, Esther. Thank you.